Uh, my name is Mike Blyvis. I'm an emergency physician and currently work just northeast of Atlanta, Georgia. I've been involved in emergency ultrasound for approximately 15 years. Uh, and really many uh, tales come to mind about why ultrasound is uh, so important. And in my mind, uh, lots of them support the concept of ultrasound first, uh, why it's so critical for patient care, uh, impro improving efficacy, uh, safety, uh, cutting costs. And one particular one that has always stuck with me is about uh, a young lady, 16-year-old uh, young woman, who 10 years ago uh, came in in full cardiac arrest uh, in the hospital I was working. At that time, I happened to walk in and take over my shift and several of my residents were working on her. And they had actually been working on her for about 30 minutes. Normally we think of cardiac arrest as being associated with older patients. Uh, their life expectancy may be drawing to an end uh, and they may not survive this critical illness. So a lot of times by 30 minutes we've let them go. Since she was young and otherwise healthy and this was sudden, we were doing everything we could. But it had come to a point after 30 minutes where she still had no pulse uh, and my residents were about to give up on her, which was quite reasonable based on what we used at that time, which was a physical examination. We felt for pulses multiple places, there were none, and at a certain point, you give up. Uh, as I walked in, being an ultrasound zealot, I of course grabbed the ultrasound machine and took a look at her heart. Uh, and much to all of our surprise, realized that her heart was beating vigorously. So the conclusion was that it wasn't that her heart wasn't working at all, it was something else was the matter. Uh, we gave her more fluids, we completely changed the path of our treatment. Instead of calling the code, which basically means we let her pass away and moving on to the next patient, uh, we changed our tact, gave her different medications, uh, more fluid, tremendous amount of IV fluid, uh, and in the end she survived. It turned out that uh, she had problem making steroids in her body with her adrenal glands and that kept her blood pressure very low. Uh, and we were able to compensate for that, correct it, and she was discharged from the intensive care unit several days later. And in that case, uh, I, my former beliefs of I can just feel for a pulse and make an accurate decision whether to continue resuscitating somebody or to let them die. Uh, completely fell apart and that that's a decision that uh, it's hard to understand until you've made it uh, and the, the error that I almost made in that case was a, a for a 16 year old young woman that had her whole life ahead of her and because of ultrasound in that case uh, it completely changed the outcome uh, taught me many new things and I think made an incredible difference uh, at a very low cost uh, very safely it saved a young 16-year-old life uh, that is now happy and living. Simply pressing and uh, listening, or I'm sorry, feeling for a pulse is very inaccurate. And others have looked at this too, but we actually did a study where we looked at how well can we tell if there's a pulse or not. Right. And in about 30% of cases to 35, where the ultrasound showed a fairly well-beating heart, Nobody at the, the bedside could tell that there was a pulse. The more challenging thing was that 11% of the time, somebody called out, I have a pulse. It might have been me, it might have been one, one of my nurses. The ultrasound showed that there was no heart movement at all. When somebody calls out, I have a pulse, everybody stands away, they stop doing chest compressions. And everything we know now shows us that you never stop doing chest compressions until you really know the patient is doing better. So, what we're in effect saying is 11% of the time, people stop when they shouldn't. And that's interesting.